Today on Deep Dive, we're going to be looking at DC Comics Detective Comics number 293. Can the dynamic duo escape the dark world? The answer lies inside. Hello everyone, my name is Devin, also known as DH Artist, and welcome back to my Deep Dive series. Today's issue features plenty of great action. Not only are we treated to a Batman adventure, but we also get stories featuring Aquaman and Martian Manhunter. Now with each book you can expect their conditions to vary. Today's issue is in good condition. While there's some wear on the cover and a small amount of tape on the spine, it won't affect the artwork or the story. Now even though this can be viewed on your phone or computer, try casting it onto your TV so you can really see the detail and quality of the book. If you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more content like it, check out some of my other deep dives. I've covered issues like Hawkman number 6, Amazing Spider-Man number 55, Superpowers number 1, and Tales to Astonish number 45, featuring the return of the villainous Egghead. For a complete list of my videos, visit the organized playlists on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Detective Comics number 293 was published in July of 1961. Executive editor was Jack Schiff. Cover artists were Sheldon Moldoff and Ira Schnapp. There are three stories in this book. The Batman story, Prisoners of the Dark World, was penciled by Sheldon Moldoff and inked by Charles Paris. The Aquaman story, titled the Sensational Sea Scoops was both written in pencil by Nick Cardi, and the Martian Manhunter story titled The Girl Hero Contest was written by Jack Miller and penciled and inked by Joe Serta. The book consists of 32 pages with a cover price of 10 cents. Our first story, Prisoners of the Dark World, begins on a ferry in Gotham Bay, where besides a light crew and a handful of passengers, there's also a wanted criminal named Eddie Stark. But following him on board is Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, famous for their secret identities as Batman and Robin. As the ferry crosses Gotham Bay, it comes upon an eerie fog, and as it passes inside, everything becomes silent as if it were cut off from the real world. Suddenly the fog disappears, and where Gotham City once stood, a shoreline of a strange land lies ahead. Thinking that it's a trick to fool him, the criminal Eddie Stark pulls his gun, looking for the captain. But before he can make it to the wheelhouse, Batman and Robin jump into action, knocking the gun overboard. Hearing the commotion, the rest of the passengers gather around the dynamic duo, asking for answers as to where they are. Batman then explains that somehow the fog created a time warp, causing their ferry to travel into a new dimension. Then just as the ferry reaches land, Eddie Stark breaks free from his restraints, escaping into the mysterious forest. Following the caped crusaders, the passengers explore the new world until suddenly they're surrounded by strange creatures. Fearing that the creatures are dangerous, Batman and Robin leap into action, and while they don't speak out loud, Batman clearly hears their commands, meaning that the creatures are telepathic. And though the Gotham castaways fight valiantly, the strange creatures known as Yelans zap them with the Energizers, taking everyone prisoner. After returning everyone to the ferry, the Yelans travel up the coastline, to their fortress called Yella. Inside the city, Batman and Robin are brought before the chief, revealing that his men captured Eddie Stark. The chief read his mind using a teledome and thinks that all humans are menaces. 
But before Batman can explain that the others mean him no harm, a guard rushes into the room, proclaiming that their fortress is under attack. Rushing outside, our heroes watch as creatures known as Grugs hurl their coiled bodies at the city walls. Before the chief can use his teledome, he is knocked out by falling debris, and taking advantage of the confusion, Eddie grabs the teledome and escapes. Unable to chase after him, Batman and Robin fight the attacking Grugs. Then quickly using some beams as battering rams, everyone teams up and pushes the Grugs back over the wall. And even though they're victorious, the chief warns that they'll attack again. The chief tells Batman that the Teledome was their secret weapon against the Grugs. For years, the Grugs waged war with them, and after finally building the Teledome, they'd be able to command them with their minds, since the Grugs are a lower form of life. But since Eddie stole the Teledome, many lives are in danger. Batman and Robin then offer to track down Eddie in exchange for their ferry and everyone's safe release. Accepting Batman's offer, the dynamic duo splits up and heads out in search for Eddie and the Teledome. Meanwhile, not far away, Eddie is cornered by some Grugs. Then using the Teledome, he commands them to leave. While Eddie is busy celebrating, Batman arrives to capture him. But since Eddie is using the Teledome, he commands the Grugs to return and attack. Putting up a valiant fight, Batman is eventually overpowered and taken prisoner. Noticing that the fog is reappearing in the bay, Eddie takes an army of Grugs to attack the Elans, so he can steal the ferry back to Gotham. With only two Grugs guarding him, Batman manages to distract one of them, giving Robin enough time to overpower the other and rescue him. Back at the fortress of the Elans, the army of Grugs breaches their defenses, and when a series of nets only slows them down, the rest of the Gotham prisoners leap into battle, helping the Yolans. Meanwhile, not far away, Batman and Robin discover giant plant pods. Seeing that their pollen causes anyone who inhales it to sneeze, gives Batman an idea. Quickly arriving at the fortress, Batman and Robin throw the pods at Eddie and the Grugs causing everyone to start sneezing and Eddie to lose the Teledome. With the Grugs defeated and the Teledome returned, the dynamic duo and the rest of the passengers board the ferry with Eddie Stark in custody. Then after traveling back through the eerie fog, the ferry arrives safe in Gotham City. Some of the classic advertising found within this issue is a half-page ad for a kid-sized frontier cabin, there's a half-page ad for Tootsie Rolls, America's favorite candy. There's a coupon for free admission to the Palisades Amusement Park in Bergen County, New Jersey. And on the back, kids could win a beautiful new photo ring by correctly identifying the four famous Americans hidden in the ad. Taking a brief break in the action, we have a public service announcement titled, Gifts from Your Elders. It details the advantages of children spending time with seniors discovering that there's plenty to learn from the older generation. Our second story, The Sensational Sea Scoops, begins as Aquaman and Aqualad survey the high seas. Suddenly off in the distance, they see Ken Wall's news helicopter get shot down by an attack plane. Acting quickly, Aquaman summons sea sponges and whale sharks to keep the chopper afloat. A few days later, when Aquaman visits Ken in the hospital, he finds that Ken is in a temporary coma. Deciding to help him out, Aquaman promises Ken's wife that him and Aqualad will help produce and deliver the maritime newspaper, while Ken is in a coma. They then quickly get to work using underwater cameras to get some exclusive pictures of an undersea volcanic eruption. The next day, when an ocean liner accidentally rams a cargo vessel, Aquaman uses conger eels to rescue the survivors, providing them with the perfect scoop 
for their newspaper. A few days later, as our heroes deliver the latest newspaper edition by a whale back, the pages get too wet, so Aquaman orders a boat big enough to carry the entire edition. Some time later, while towing the latest edition, a pirate submarine spots Aquaman and Aqualad. Seeing that the entire newspaper edition is in one boat, they fire a torpedo to destroy it. Before the torpedo can strike its target, a giant squid safely deflects it, and before one of the sea pirates can use his machine gun, a swordfish leaps out of the water, knocking the weapon from his hands. With the pirates in disarray, Aquaman and Aqualad jump aboard the sub, making short work of the crooks. A few days later, when Ken awakens from his coma, the Maritime News has its biggest scoop of the year, all thanks to Aquaman and Aqualad. Our third and final story, The Girl Hero Contest, begins on a busy street where we find an out-of-control car rolling down a hill with a little old lady in the back seat. Suddenly leaping from the rooftop of a parked car is patrolwoman Sally landing in the front seat of the out-of-control car. Attempting to apply the brakes, Sally finds that they're gone and the car gains speed as it rolls down the hill. Luckily, Jean Jones is nearby, and he instantly changes into the Martian Manhunter. Quickly flying at Martian speed so no one can see him, he dips under the car to slow it down, safely bringing it to a stop, but still staying out of sight, so Sally can take credit for the rescue. Back at headquarters, Jean Jones and the other officers congratulate Sally on a job well done. While off in the corner, patrolwoman Diane watches jealously as Sally gets all the attention, vowing to make her own rescue that's even better than Sally's. The next day, as Diane patrols her beat, she sees a boat overturn in the river. Wanting to show who the bravest woman on the force really is, she dives into the water, swimming swiftly to the rescue. But as she gets closer, she finds that there are three people who can't swim and she won't be able to save them all. Thankfully nearby, Jean Jones sees that Diane needs help, so after changing into the Martian Manhunter, he dives under the water unseen and creates a freak wave that quickly carries Diane and the boaters safely ashore. Back at headquarters, Diane and Sally bicker over who's the bravest, and Detective Jean Jones will have a hard time picking who deserves the medal. A few days later, while Diane is on her beat, she comes across an apartment fire. Seeing that a little girl is trapped on the roof, both Diane and Sally race inside. With the staircase on fire, Diane takes the elevator up. She then wedges the door open so Sally can't follow her but when she reaches the roof, she finds Sally already up there, and before the three can take the fire escape down, it falls away from the building, trapping them on the roof. Returning to try the elevator, they find that it won't work, because the metal wedge that Diane used has melted. Realizing that they were both foolish for trying to compete for a gold medal, Diane and Sally return to the roof. Meanwhile, down below, the firemen and Martian Manhunter watch helplessly as the fire burns. Since the fire department doesn't have a ladder tall enough, and since fire is the one weakness of all Martians. Searching for other options, Jean Jones notices a mattress company across the street. Then quickly taking all the mattresses, he builds a giant staircase, allowing Diane, Sally, and the little girl to bounce down to safety. And so a few days later, at a ceremony at headquarters, Jean Jones presents both Diane and Sally with gold medal awards for bravery.
I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. If there's a particular issue or comic you'd like me to flip, drop it down in the comments section and I'll see if I can edit my poll box. If you enjoy these types of videos, please show your support by subscribing to my channel. As always, please consider liking and feel free to share this video. And until next time, deep divers, thanks for watching.